Well, hey guys, Mr. Delcor coming back at you again for a little more remote learning. Uh, we're going to continue talking about amphibians today and specifically frogs. Uh, but before we do that, uh, just a heads up, there may be a little bit of chirping in the background uh, during today's lesson. That's because I'm sitting in the back room here with my little chicks as, as I record this. And I think I might be able to even show you here. Let's see, where's my camera on this thing? There it is. Let's see. Oh, there they are. Little chickies. We got five of them. A variety of breeds. Going to be some pretty awesome laying hens in about five months, I think. And uh, they were about a week old today. Just starting to get their wing feathers. And that would be, you know, a leftover adaptation for uh, young precocial birds. Birds that are born eyes open, fuzzy, ready to go, can walk within minutes of hatching. Uh, but those wing feathers are going to come in very quickly so that you can see what that, that one just did. They can flutter up into a tree and roost. Uh, with mom off the ground, which would uh, provide safety very early on, and they're working on that skill right now. Uh, but pretty exciting stuff. We got chicks going here at at, uh, at the Delcourt residence. All right, uh, back to it. Let's talk about amphibians here uh, a little bit more. So uh, we we mentioned this already the other day, but we said amphibians are ectothermic poikilotherms. They're essentially cold blooded right? And they use the environment to regulate their temperature. They lay eggs, most of which require water. Uh, most, of the, uh, most of them have part of their life cycle that occurs on water, but some of them can reproduce completely on land, uh, but that's rare. They have smooth, moist skin that's permeable to air and water, so they can absorb water and breathe through their skin. And uh, most have gills as larvae and then develop lungs as adult, but adults, but there are some uh, salamanders that will retain those gills throughout their lives, and they have that three-chambered heart. We spent a lot of time before break talking about vernal pools, um, but let's let's focus in on frogs today. Let's talk about the order Anura. So remember, we talked about all those Latin families and orders. Uh, the Latin order Anura is where all of the frogs belong. And uh, frogs we know are characterized by a head that's kind of fused to their body. If you look, frogs don't have a neck, right? If you think about it, their head is just like stuck to their body. So that's a characteristic of being a frog. Uh, most lack a tail and they use external fertilization, meaning that a female frog expels her eggs and then after her egg has left her body, the male fertilizes it on the way out, similar to fish. And then males have these characteristic vocalizations, which we're going to focus on uh, probably next time or the time after. Um, we'll, we'll do a whole thing on frog calls. It'll be pretty fun. So what I want to do today, though, is, is kind of focus in on Maine's nine species of frogs. We're really going to kind of focus on the eight common ones from southern Maine. I'll show you a little bit about each one today, and then you're going to pick one and work on a profile assignment for me. Pretty easy, simple day. So uh, of the uh, eight southern Maine members of this order in Eura, uh, we have the American toad. We can look that guy up. Let's do this. Let's do an image search. Uh, the American toad. And let's do images here. The American toad, I bet a lot of us have found toads in our yard. They're pretty common. Um, and they're, they're characterized by that kind of like really blocky body, really dry uh, skin with those bumps on it. And toads are a member of the order. And Euro toads are a little different than frogs. Uh, in, in their build and they're a little more terrestrial they're going to spend the vast majority of their lives on land but they will they do need to return to water to reproduce and um, I bet a lot of you who maybe have been out fishing in the early spring have seen um, toad eggs they are like these long stringy eggs and they're usually out in like the middle of a weedy pond like a uh, out around lily pads and stuff in a pond and you'll find toad eggs um, curled up in these like kind of long corkscrew squiggly coils all amongst the weeds in the pond and those are eggs from the American toad all right so let's let's look at our next one here uh, our next one's the oh the gray tree frog one of my favorites so the gray tree frog is one that's pretty common in southern Maine we hear it all the time but it is rarely observed this little guy can change color to match his surroundings um, there it's our largest tree frog it's you know uh, maybe two or three inches long um, and you'll commonly find them maybe sticking to the side of your house if you leave your outside light on and you got moths and stuff flying around everywhere that'll attract them I've seen a lot of pictures of kids finding them on the sides of their house but they are so super camouflaged when they sit still they just disappear uh, and you can see 
how tough they would be to find, but they have those big sticky pads on their feet. These are just a really, really cool frog, and their vocalization is, uh, is just beautiful. Um, we hear them all the time in the summertime around Maine. I'm sure we've all heard them and maybe just not known what we're hearing at night. So there's our gray tree frog. Our next one, oh, the spring peeper is our other tree frog. So uh, the spring peeper is another species of tree frog that we're all hearing right now, super loud, and they'll be loud right up until about June, peeping away, super high pitched call. They're a tree frog. You can see those sticky pads on their feet. These guys are tiny though. Like that is just about a full grown American peeper uh, or spring peeper. They are really, really small. The dead giveaway on a peeper is the X pattern on their back. They have kind of varied markings, but um, really they all almost always have that kind of X pattern on their back, which is kind of neat. There's your spring peeper, really neat little tree frog, super loud, high pitched peep. Um, as a kid, I used to spend a lot of time outside at night behind my house trying to find spring peepers. There was thousands of them calling and I could almost never find them because as soon as you get close, they quiet right down and they, they're, uh, they're really, really tricky to catch up with. All right, let's look at our next one. Oh, the wood frog. We've spent some time already talking about the wood frog, but worth uh, taking one last look at again. The wood frog is super common all across, you know, northern latitudes and the dead giveaway on the wood frog is that dark mask and that kind of leafy coloration and the white line across the upper lip a little wood frog and these guys spend the majority of the year in, in the woods under the leaf litter and coming out at night um, and these are everywhere in the main woods very very common frog another one that's kind of rarely observed because they're so secretive and able to hide and they're not where we typically think of when we think of frogs and we think of ponds where frogs are much more visible um, yeah, the wood frogs are out in the woods. Uh, so what about our pickerel frog? Our pickerel frog is a really beautiful one. I bet some of you guys may have seen these. If you have kind of a weedy pond anywhere near your house or around the shore of a, of a permanent pond, uh, these guys are known for uh, this white line down what's called their lateral folds down their bodies. Uh, and they have two rows of uh, dark brown spots that go up their back. And they, they don't get very big. We're talking an inch and a half, two inches long, full grown. And they have this really cool call that sounds like a low snore, a really quiet snore uh, that we'll listen to uh, during another class. So there's your, there's your pickerel frog, really neat. They, they prefer marshes, but they'll come up out of, the, uh, out of the marshes and spend some time in grassy, wet meadows in the summertime as well. Uh, and then we have the leopard frog. This is a species of special concern in Maine. Uh, their numbers, we think, are in decline. Um, leopard frogs are really cool. They're a close relative of the pickerel frog, just larger. They tend to run green, but they can be kind of brownish too. And if I look at the difference here with a leopard frog, we see that instead of two perfect rows of brown spots on the pickerel frog down the back, they've kind of got varied spotting. There's not, it's not like two perfect rows. Leopard frogs are just truly beautiful frogs, and they have those light colored lateral folds as well. The northern leopard frog, really cool uh, frog um, that I've, I've found a few times around the state. Uh, and then uh, let's see, we've got two more. We've got the green frog, and this is interesting here. Green frog, this will be tricky to see. We get, oh, here we go, this will be fine. So if we look, we've got a green frog right here. Uh, this is maybe our most common frog. If you've been around any kind of golf course pond or um, uh, you know, any kind of permanent pond, weedy, marshy area, you'll hear these guys calling, you'll see them along the edges of the pond. Uh, and green frogs are identified by their generally green color, although they can be kind of brown as well. Oh, Aaron, careful with the chickens. I want to see them. Aaron's, Aaron's bugging the chickens. Um, so, they have these long lateral folds down their body and uh, that large eardrum on the male you can see there. And these are just, again, a super common frog, any kind of permanent body of water around here. Probably our most common aquatic frog in the state. And then uh, our last one is the American bullfrog. Um, and this is our largest frog. These guys get huge. Young bullfrogs can be mistaken for uh, green frogs, but the the uh, the key characteristic here, the difference, is that bullfrogs lack lateral folds. If you look, their back is smooth all the way down. There's a big male American bullfrog, and these guys have this really cool 
deep kind of rum rum call that they do. Um, really, really cool stuff. So uh, here's what you're gonna do today. You're gonna pick one of these eight species of frogs I just went through and um, you're gonna do a profile on it. The assignment will be posted to Google Classroom and you can do a little bit of research, take you a few minutes, find out a little bit more about your favorite frog and we'll see you guys again next time. I really.